Hey, this is Chris again in our final video of the uh, Making and Rigging an Eye Set series. Uh, in this one, we're going to be using Actions. So if you go up to the top where it says Window and Actions, you'll see uh, uh, the Actions window pops up. And it, this main line, where it says main line, represents the timeline. So um, this is where everything happens on the main line. And up here it looks like a little uh, layer icon. You want to uh, click on that and we can start building uh, our first action. And we'll call that uh, simply blink. And assign it a shortcut key. I'm going to put B. Hit OK. And when you do that you'll see the timeline uh, window turns white. That means we're in editing mode for the actions. So what I'm going to do is right here at uh, frame one, it starts it on frame one, I'm going to make sure that in the bone layer the translate bone is selected and that we are on the bone layer and the layers palette here. And we're just going to move the bottom eyelid up and then the top one down. And then we're going to move it out to the third keyframe, number three, and then just hit reset, and the top one should open, and then select the bottom one and hit reset, and that should move down. And if you uh, grab the playhead here and scrub back, you'll see we get a blink. Blink, blink, blink. Good enough. The second action we're going to do, look right, and we'll assign that R. Okay, and we'll get a fresh editing window up down here on the timeline. And all we're going to do is select that uh, eyeball phone and move them to the right. And then we're going to add a keyframe at 12. And then at 24, we're going to move them to the left. And to add the keyframe, I just right-clicked on the on the uh, gray timeline, and it pops up Add. You can see it says Add Keyframe. And it's something you should already be familiar with. And so when we scrub back to zero and play through it, the eyes move right, and then they slowly move back. If you want to prolong the amount of time that the eyeballs take to get over to that right position, you can slide that keyframe at 1 out to the 6, and then slide the middle set of keyframes over a little. So this is what it'll look like. Look, and then slide back. <clears throat> and, okay, we're going to do the same thing for look left. And the shortcut key with L. So again, we're going to grab our bone here in the eyeballs and slide them off to the left. And then at the 12, <clears throat> we're going to just insert a keyframe, which simply holds the position. Otherwise, what you'd get is the eyeballs would go over and then they just slowly drift back through the whole duration of the time frame, which is fine if you want them to do that, they can. There's more than one way to skin a cat in this program, that's for sure. And patience is definitely the key. So I'm going to put this on 30, I'll make them a little different than the right, and uh, I'll slide, the, slide them out a little, make it a longer look. And at 36, we're going to just slide them back and then <clears throat> grab the playhead, scrub through it, it looks, and then it drifts back to center. You can, again, make, you can make the duration of that look as long as you like. It could be a quick glance or it could be a long, uh, long duration of time that that eyeball stays over to the left. It's up to you. It depends on what your needs are, I guess. 
And for the fourth action, um, we'll just use this to finish it up real quick. And we're just going to call this angry look with the A. And uh, we can tighten up on the eye shape itself and grab these eyebrows and just drop them down. And you can adjust them up or wherever you like them. <clears throat> so there's an angry look. drag those out to the six. So we'll drag those keyframes out to the six so it takes a second to get there, or half a second to get there. No, maybe 12. Let's squirt through, and there's the angry look. And you can you can return that too if you want to put this on the you know 24 or anywhere else on the timeline and then return it. But I'm just going to leave that so that once it's in the angry look mode, it's going to stay in the angry look mode. And then I will use, uh, when we go back to the main line, I will use the main line to bring it back to normal. So there's two ways to insert these actions now that we have them. Now the first one is to set a set your playhead here on the 18 or wherever you like and um, double click on it to activate it. You'll see a little arrow coming up. Oops. I didn't want to do that. Go back to the main line. Put this on the 12. Single click on the blink. And right up here at the top you'll see it says insert reference. You can just click that and it will insert the blink in there for you. And when you hit uh, play you'll see we inserted the blink. The other way to insert these actions is to use the hotkeys that we assigned them. And blink is B, so I'm going to hit the space bar and then hit the B where I want to insert it, which will be about the 18. And then I'm going to hit the space bar again to stop it. So here's how that works. Space bar, B, stop. So now we've inserted a second blink using a hotkey. And you can see if I hit the space bar and play through this, you'll see it blink twice. Blink, blink. And at the 24, um, we can put the look right in. And we'll just play through that. At the 60, we'll hit the left. And we'll go all the way out here to the 108. And uh, blink, left, right. And we'll, oh, we haven't used the angry yet, so we'll put the angry angry okay there they go angry and now to keep those eyes in that angry position for as long as you need them to you just drag this timeline and we'll stop here at the 168 and what I'm gonna do here there's a couple different ways you can do this but all I'm gonna do is uh, click the zero hit copy and then paste at the 168 and those eyes will return to their default position. So when we scrub backwards and play the animation, this is what our eyes do. Blink, blink, looking, looking, and getting angry, and they're drifting back. And that's what I talked about earlier. See how they drifted back to the position? So. What I'm going to do is delete this out, and I'm going to insert a blank keyframe at 162, add a keyframe, which will hold these, this angry position until the 162. Then at the 168, copy, I'm copying keyframe 0, and I'm going to put the playhead on 168 and paste it in there to go back and if, let me see if all went well it should hold that angry position until and there they go and they're holding at the 162 they'll go back up so that's about it for uh, using actions 
on the I set that we created in the first two tutorials. And I hope that helped you gain a better understanding of Anime Studio Pro 7 and the functionality of eye sets and bone layers and actions and all the other great things that this program can do. So enjoy your day and happy animation.